I'm going to look at how you can sort of use the heavy side method to solve some more complicated problems. Uh, this is the one, and, and again, I did it the long way earlier. Um, it's got a quadratic term in the bottom. Um, you do have a little bit of a challenge here uh, because the traditional heavy side method sort of works for part of it, but it doesn't work for everything. Um, so you can start out the same way. Uh, what makes the denominator zero? Well, that's an x value of zero. Uh, cover up the term that's going to make that zero. You can substitute zero in here, you get four in the numerator. You can substitute zero in here, you get four in the denominator. And that tells you that a is going to be equal to one, okay? Now your problem here at this point is, uh, unless you're going to use imaginary numbers, which I suppose you could toy around with but isn't really the standard method, uh, unless you're going to use imaginary numbers, you don't have a real number value that's going to make that denominator zero. And this is where things can, can get a little bit more complicated. Um, you can use the heavy side method to find the values that you can find, and then you can kind of do something similar to the process that led into the heavy side method to find some of your other values. So um, let's, let's say that I wanted to, um, to get rid of the denominators here. So I multiply this numerator uh, by x times x squared plus 4, and of course that stuff all cancels. Um, I multiply this uh, term times x times x squared plus 4, and I multiply this term times x times x squared plus 4, okay? And so, of course, these totally disappear. We've got a 2x squared minus x plus 4, okay? Uh, this stuff cancels here, and I already know what a is, so I just get an x squared plus 4 here, okay? And then the x squared plus 4 term is going to cancel here and here, uh, I'm going to get a bx squared uh, plus cx, okay? This needs to equal this. Well, a couple things here. Um, I have an x squared and a 4 term. I can literally just cancel those two terms. Uh, so the two 4s go away, and I can subtract an x squared from both sides and just simplify things down a little bit. That's going to give me x squared minus x is equal to um, x squared plus bx squared plus cx, okay? And now uh, we can see a couple of different things. Uh, first of all, we can see that b plus 1 needs to equal 1 here, right? Um, because I have 1x squared and a bx squared, and these two things need to add up to equal 1x squared. Well, that tells me that b is going to be negative 1. Okay, um, so I've still found a way to find my b, and I already knew that my a was equal to 1. And um, then I can uh, also kind of use that same kind of approach to find c. Uh, notice here that uh, I have negative 1x equals cx, so negative 1 is going to be equal to c. So sometimes you can use the heavy side method to find part of your variable values, and sometimes just the fact that that uh, knocks a variable out is going to enable you to figure everything else out from there. So it doesn't work perfectly in this case, uh, but you still can use it in the circumstances where you can get denominators equal to zero. thought you should at least see that example.